Hi, welcome to Dr. Fred Bell's Health Science and Energy Show live, August 2000, August 26, 2006. Well, tonight I didn't have any guests on tonight because I didn't want any because I thought we'd do a open mic show and uh, just talk about things in general, which needs to be done. As you know, it's been a little while since I've done a show, probably a month or two by myself, um, without any guests or anything. Last week's show, by the way, was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a break in the, what I call a break in the terrorism show, a good terroristic break. Anyway, I'm, I see over here on uh, CNN that a lot of uh, Osama bin Laden stuff tonight, and it's really interesting because... Um, the government really hasn't been looking for him for a long time. As a matter of fact, he was in Riyadh just before 9-11, and the head of the CIA up there came and, and had him uh, vacate the premises because they were going to use him as a scapegoat, which they obviously did. If you study your um, news correctly, you'll find that there never was an actual link to him directly. There was to, obviously, his terrorist group, but there never was a link directly to him. Anyway... There's been a lot of excitement going on. We're entering the what I call the true realm of the hologram. And in entering the true realm of the hologram, which we've talked about for years, it's the countdown in the last days. And as you can see, uh, as a matter of fact, as a good example, we were watching some old 50 movies the other night with uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, a couple of her old films and a couple of other films from that time with Rock Hudson, and uh, it was really neat to be able to see in those days how you could freely get out of an airplane, freely run around the United States in the 50s and 60s and early 70s without a problem. Now look what it is today. And I started doing my shows back in the 70s, late 70s, a lot of radio TV shows, guesting mostly then, and unfortunately I could see the handwriting on the wall. And I also knew in those times that Star Wars was going to be up for an alternative purpose, but I wasn't, you know, too sure until the late 70s about how the ELF stuff was going to start happening, and it would be eventually launched from satellites, and the huge drug industry uh, that would come behind it, because people would get so frustrated with these ELF waves going into their metabolism that it would cause them to do stupid things. And, of course, it's these, these, these energies are not just directed at normal citizens. They're directed at everyone. And the, the problem with directing them at everyone, if somebody is on the edge of a, as being a fanatic, then what happens is this will push them over the edge. And that's exactly what happens. You know, I used to have a saying, you can't go to the peace table with a bunch of constipated warriors. And bottom line is, there can be no peace table with all these negative energies being shoved into people's systems. Second thing with a hologram, people talk about the photon belt and the higher vibratory rate. It's a commonly known fact in science and in, in spiritual schools that this Earth and our solar system rotates around the Pleiades every 26,827.5 years. In the process of that rotation, what happens is we have 12,000 years of degrading consciousness and 12,000 years of enlightening consciousness. Somewhere in between, the rhythm of the DNA in the body has to maintain science, some type of semblance so that it produces a being that resembles humanity, our human being characteristics as we see. Unfortunately, there's a huge split in the genetic gene pool in different, based on different countries around the world as the cultures have different DNA bases and databases that start at different times. We didn't all originate at one time. The Caucasian types were more inclined to have an interface with the extraterrestrials as well as the Japanese-Chinese culture and part of the Inca Mayan culture. These were the cultures that had a greater genetic interplay with these aliens that came here over the last thousands of years. So as a result, 
you see science springing up in these cultures. That includes Greece, by the way, in the Caucasian. A lot of our science came from Greece. And a lot of it comes from Israel. A lot of people don't realize the cell phone, a lot of the modern things that we have today comes from Israel. So if you start looking around at the technologies, things originated from a lot of different places. The bottom line is now we're in a common mix. And when we're in a common mix, the cream starts to rise to the top, the higher consciousness starts to separate drastically from the lower consciousness. And usually along the way to the separation is a huge amount of anger and resentment because this is what happens when people live in denial. And terrorists, who I would consider as a race of beings, are probably the greatest cowards in the world. They cannot deny, they cannot get off their rear ends and start doing things that would be productive to humanity because it's a lot easier to go into denial and be destructive. So the destructive part uh, has to go by the wayside at some point. Secondly, as we move around this procession of the equinox, we have outside pressures on our DNA and outside pressures on the DNA of the planet. For example, the Earth's temperature from the last century has raised about 1.4 degrees. Raising the Earth's temperature of 1.4 degrees is like raising the human body 1.4 degrees, which would put, put a human at a temperature of approximately 100 degrees. If a human being has a temperature of approximately 100 degrees, it starts a vastly degrading result in the body. The body generates, gets a stimulus into the immune system, and it starts generating interferon, which comes out to destroy the virus or the bacterial infection or whatever the disruption is in the human body. This is a fact. The same thing happens with the Earth, Terra. This planet has a temperature now, and it is now starting to eliminate some of the parasites that are inhabiting it all the way from the bowels of the Earth, the core of the Earth, all the way up to the surface. When the Earth lines itself up with other planets, and there is some kind of an alignment between all the planetary bodies, the nine planets that we've discovered, the tenth one that has been brought about, and several more that haven't got names yet. This is called the Jupiter effect. When you have the Jupiter effect amplified by a full moon here, that is the most tumultuous time in human consciousness. And it's also the most tumultuous time for the behavior of the planet itself. One of the things that happens with the Earth during this time is that Earth's vibratory frequency is 180 degrees out of phase with the other planetary body. This misalignment causes a discrepancy or a stress in the chi force of the Earth versus the Sun. The human body has in it a chi force force or an energy field that's created by the electrolytes in the brain. And these electrolytes in the brain fire off the synapses. The synapses, in turn, produce electricity, electrical energy exchange between the electrolytes in the base of the brain and the electrical fields in the 72,000 major wires that form the human body. 72,000 major wires or nadis of the human body are called, it's actually called the spinal cord, and it's also called, you know, part of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the psychic area of the body. And what happens is this gets derailed. This is getting derailed in a, in a pretty, pretty tremendous way right now. On top of that, the humans don't have a very good tendency to eat properly. The atmosphere is polluted, the electrical fields coming into this planet are polluted, and the overall aura field of the person is pretty much in bad condition. We have gone into the invention and distribution of things that help solve these problems, but unfortunately, most of the world's not aware of the alternative forms of technology that new age artists and engineers, scientists have developed.
so therefore they suffer and they're too busy to pay attention. So therefore, if you look at all of the populace of the earth, the summation total of the entire field of human auras on the earth, which is called by the Tibetans the anima mundi, is very negative, very disproportionate, very disharmonious. This causes other problems. As soon as the earth comes into the Jupiter effect, what happens is these higher forces that are moving back and forth between the planets are vastly disrupted. Now looking at the human body, when we start talking about the chi force, whenever the synapses are firing away and we have the aura producing this field around the earth, I mean around the human body, when it's in harmony and it's on a high energy mode, the cerebral spinal fluid in the body rises. When the cerebral spinal fluid in the body rises, it produces what's called the kundalini effect. The kundalini effect, as it goes through the human neural system, creates a change in resistance of the electrical energies required to pass energy through the wires of the nadis of the body. That's what that means in simple terms is, without the kundalini rays and the cerebral spinal fluid in place, the electrical wires in the body are much like lead. They don't conduct very well. Some people, they aren't even that good. They're like graphite, which is even worse. I mean, a lot of you probably remember we went from electrical wires and automobile ignition to the spark plugs from the distributor cap. We went from wires to graphite. Graphite had a tendency to put out smaller amounts of radio frequency interference, RFI, but the result was the spark delivered to the engine was no good. Gas mileage went down and pollution became a problem. Same thing happens in the human body. The average person would have equivalent of a graphite wire system. This would mean that whatever subjective negative change that the Earth's auric field would have on its neighbor planets and the sun, the negative feedback that it would receive would be first to be felt in these graphite type individuals. Other people are able to change their wiring system by changing different aspects of their daily nature in, into copper, gold, and finally platinum. Platinum is the highest conductive material there is, one of. A person with a graphite auric system, low resistance between the brain and the bottom of the feet and back again, is going to be prone to all kinds of free radical nuisances. So therefore, they're going to be getting every seasonal virus they're going to have uh, problems like mus muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, poor eyesight, poor hearing, poor muscular coordination, diabetic sugar problems, hypoglycemic. All of these things are going to show up slowly and surely. Most, time, most times for the American type of people, Caucasians, these problems don't develop until late 40s, early 50s. And then they compound gradually, and then, of course, it's takes a drugstore to keep these people functioning, and that's not much. It's not the way we're supposed to be. Secondly, when these problems develop, the consciousness is lowered, and there are controlling factions out there. Most people don't really pay attention much anymore to what really goes on unless it's a terrorist threat, and a lot of these terrorist threats are fake anyway. It's just another way to manipulate people. So when all this is going on, it makes the world a much more difficult place to be. The other thing that's happening is is that people appear that time appears to be going much faster. The reason that time appears to be going much faster is the fact that nothing in our consciousness or our world is running in a linear manner. In other words, when you look across the room at someone, that person isn't there all the time. They appear to be there all the time. Because in your imagination, in their imagination, you, the appearance is, the illusion is, that you're both in the same room at the same time. But the fact is, during this time of observing the other person in the room, the entire psyche of the body is completely disassembled and reassembled within billions of a second. In the older times, this assembly, reassembly, disassembly procedure took a lot longer than it does now. 
So therefore, time appeared to drag kind of slowly along. It just seemed like forever to get something done. The day dragged out. This is how it used to be. But now, you have these higher speed transients where we're here and we're not here, we're here and we're not here. And so the illusion of that is there's more time that we appear not to be here, time moves faster. The psyche part of us that was dragging in the old days is not dragging now. So a lot of people will say, well, where is the psyche? Where is this place that we used to sort of but snooze in and out of, and we now, in a very rapid manner, go in and out of very rapidly. Well, this place is called an alternative time field. It's a place, it's we call side curtains. It's a, a place where people have more than one life going on at once. For a long time, those of you that studied the doctrine of reincarnation, and that's a good portion of this planet, we had a series of linear lives where one lifetime we'd make a series of mistakes and we would reincarnate again in the next lifetime to pay the negative karma back that we occurred during the previous incarnation and in the most newest incarnation not hopefully make the mistake again. This was called the path to enlightenment. Today it doesn't work that way. Today what happens is that we live all our future lives sequentially with this one. And so we're so busy moving around in these other time zones that the time that we are focused on, where we had the longest succession of linear lives, happens to be here on Terra, the third dimension as we know it now. When we talk and communicate with extraterrestrials like Pleiadians and Andromedans and other groups, they have long since mastered the sequential and parallel existence program, and they can at will move themselves into side continuums. They can do it under control. They can do it with great stealth, and it's not a problem. In order to observe this movement in other humans and other beings, I should say, human humanoids, we as humans have to increase our synaptic rate in our brain. We have to increase the bandwidth of our hearing and we have to increase the bandwidth of our, of our vision, our optical characteristics. Typically, when we start moving in and out of these realms, we start to see these other side continuum beings or side continuous beings out of the corner of our eye. They're only in the corner of our eyes because our main focus of our consciousness is out through the center of our eyes or the direction that we're looking in. And so therefore, the side muscles and side optical phobia is allowed to relax, it's not as tense and focused, and it can be more spontaneous, therefore the bandwidth is increased on the edges of the eye. When you study with different masters, like Tibetan masters and different masters of the world, one of the things you learn to do is focus not only into this dimension, but all others simultaneously. And there are different yoga types that have names like Kriya Yoga is one form of yoga that teaches us how to do that so that we can make all observations simultaneously. Secondly, we have another problem now, and that is the dharmic feedback, which is a result of all karma of all nations, the dharmic feedback of what we have done through our mistakes in linear time, this world that we live on. And that's where it's starting to get really interesting. When you start to look at human negativity, and human ignorance, this projection of negative force fields into the sun, it causes the sun to have a basically what we would call an upset stomach. Uh, the sun is a fusion machine, a fusion device that produces a life force necessary for our DNA to sustain consciousness. Yet in some ways the sun gets its power source from us and we in turn get the life force in return from the sun. So it's a two-way street. Like who came first, the sun or mankind? Well, that's a better question than who came before the chicken or the egg, or the cow before the horse, or the cattle between, or the ox before the car. 
when you start looking at that, we have now a situation where we uh, science is observing solar flares or, or, or large chromic extensions of gases leaving the sun, sometimes millions of miles across. And that's a lot when we're only 93 million miles away. The coronal discharge of the sun frequency of discharge has increased millions of times since the 50s, a whole lot more than now than then. This comes at us, this radiation, this X-ray, these gamma rays, all these cosmic rays, come at us at a million miles per second. And they come flying into the Earth's protective layer. Without it, we wouldn't exist for five minutes. These are known as the Van Allen radiation belts. The Van Allen radiation belt slows them down, dissipates the energy, and drops the energy down. And so as it enters our outer atmospheres, which are known as the troposphere, the ionosphere, and all the different spheres that surround our planet, as it enters those things, it now goes into an electrical ionic discharge, which is known as the oral electrojet. The oral electrojet enters the Earth because it's on a tilt from the North Pole, moves down across the surfaces equally, compressing the surface of the Earth or relaxing, depending on the energy, and exits at the South Pole of the Earth. Because this energy is so ferocious now, and there's so much of it, the exit velocity has caused a huge depreciation in a large hole in the ozone layer. That's why they have a huge ozone layer at the bottom of the, of the Earth. Secondly, we're experiencing a change across the equator. The equator, of course, is the point where we have a tendency to launch spaceships that has the best velocity to reach out into space to launch a spacecraft. And so the equator has a tremendous strain on it, a, a very large centrifugal force strain. When these solar plasmas and these oral electrojets increase in frequency, they also increase in density. This creates a tremendous pressure, much more than you can even imagine. It's like increasing our atmospheric pressure from 14 pounds per square inch to 20 pounds per square inch. It's a lot of pressure. This pushes in on the tectonic plates of the Earth, causing a buckling. When you start to push in these tectonic plates and then relax them as there's an ebb and flow in this energy field, it starts to create a friction across the tectonic plates. This friction, of course, causes land changes, land masses to change, but it also creates heat. As a result of this, this heat starts to increase down at the center of the Earth and therefore, the center of the Earth becomes aggravated and its temperature also rises. The core, the molten core of the Earth's temperature is on the rise. When this happens, many, many, many old volcanic, so all the volcanoes come from the magma that's in the center of the Earth, either in pockets or down toward the center of the Earth. Also realize that the gravity would be almost zero in the center of the Earth and it would be, reach its most tremendous point at the equator or the surface of the Earth. So you have a centrifugal force working on the magma of the Earth, putting pressure on it. When you increase the temperature, you lower the density of the magma. The, the liquid molten core density, it becomes thinner. It's like taking water and making it hot. It's those places that wouldn't go when it's cold. An ice cube can't penetrate a crack but in the floor, but as soon as the ice cube melts, it can penetrate a crack in the floor, and the water drains through the crack in the floor. Look at it that way. Years ago, millions of years ago, when this Earth was first formed, there were many, many, many volcanic act activities. In, you know, the Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanoes. Laguna Beach, where I live, is a 10-million-year-old volcano. Everywhere were volcanoes on this planet. And as a result of all these volcanoes, you know, there had to be pathways, underground catacombs, underground tunnels, lava ports, lava flows, lava tunnels. 
all kinds of passageways existed from the surface of the earth all the way down to the core. As the earth cooled off, it slowed down in its rotation and changed its behavior without the interference of man, long before man came here. A lot of these passageways caved in, became blocked, clogged, or just remained inert. Like a lot of people will go for water rides that are, you know, uh, there's lots of water flowing through these lava passageways in some of the South Sea Islands, and people actually are brave enough to go riding around in these channels, but you've got to know where they come and where they go. But the bottom line is, now what's happened, because this increase in temperature, this increase of external activity, this increase in tectonic action of the planet, the lava passageways are becoming unblocked. They're starting to melt. Things that block them will now melt. Quartz, for example, will melt. Other kinds of minerals will melt. And so gradually, this magma is starting to come back up to the surface of the planet. And it's not just going to come up in the volcanoes as we knew it. I'm sure most of the people know in the New Age prophecies in Nostradamus, we talk about Mount Vesuvius in, in Italy uh, erupting as a sign of the times of the end of the days. What people don't realize is that you don't have to wait for a volcano to erupt before you realize that these small micro miniature lava flows are going to come up into the surface of the earth. They're going to find their way into sewers. They're going to find their way into cities. And they're going to start appearing soon in places you'd never expect them. There might not be a volcano extinct or active within a thousand miles and this magma flow will start to appear. So you can make book on that. That's something that's about to start happening. It's already making its way to the surface. So this is the kind of stuff that we're going to have to deal with us on this planet. And so having the problems of terrorism and all this other stuff, it almost becomes a moot point with the real environmental hazards that are coming. And they're getting closer and closer. So what has happened, you know, for example, in the parallel existence that I'm talking about? This was prophesied in, in Revelation. It talks about the Great White Throne Judgment Day where souls can no longer incarnate back and forth, we'll have to stand and witness the great changes of the earth. In other words, you're stuck. You aren't going anywhere. You're going to have to own up to what has happened here and take a part of the, part of the responsibility of the overall action. So this is where you deal with what we call divine intervention. That divine intervention obviously happens in different planets different solar systems around the Earth, I mean around the universe, around the galaxy, nothing new. Divine intervention is usually performed by beings that have had it performed on them. They're, they, they're the quickest learners. When their planet is in trouble and some other race comes to save them or help them out, then what happens is uh, they're very, you know, amicable that help and then of course karmically realizing what they've had happen to them they have to go off and help someone else so it's not like if this is a unique situation but it is a situation on top of that with the lying government the spy satellite the drug companies out of control it's pretty hard to recognize when divine intervention would happen and if anybody would even notice it while it was well I guarantee you one thing from my perspective People will notice. That's where the hologram comes in. You can't go back. And it's not going to happen um, to go back and cool off the sun. We're not going to be able to straighten out and have a classroom for every race on the planet and explain to them basic rules of nature. Don't kill each other. That's not going to happen. There's no time left for that. But what has to happen is people have to be subconsciously Program, self-program through the hologram, through their DNA. This is what extraterrestrial science is all about. This is why extraterrestrial science is coming into fruition in this world. And it's becoming more and more accepted every day because everything else doesn't work. When you get into the drug situation, if you look at how I.D. Farben is in Germany, financed by several wealthy Americans, who financed Hitler, who later on formed Merck Industries. I brought it up on my different shows. 
Burt products became Roche products and Searle products. Then we looked at Searle as the source of PCP, angel dust, mind control drugs. Then we find that Donald Rumsfeld, the CEO of that company. But when you begin to see all of these kinds of things, you begin to realize that the corruption is pretty real on the drug front. And it's really funny among doctors that treat people with these SRI reuptake inhibiting drugs, people that are, their chemistry is completely out of balance. But it's a, it's a pot, it's a crapshoot. When rug, one rug doesn't work, they stick another one on someone and they just keep rotating them around until that person is basically unfunctionable anymore in any society. Wrong attitude, wrong approach, big approach. On top of that, in this world, People are mostly looking at biochemistry. Huge fortunes are made in the biochemical field, not in the other fields. The electrical fields are starting to be recognized now. Modern medicine is recognizing the ionic exchange that goes on in chemical reactions, in amino acids and enzymes and other things that we put in our body. Science has recognized negative ionization, the need for it, although only privateering is the only way that it's even spread, you don't see any government support of any form of ionization or air rehabilitation because it's not going to happen, it won't happen, and they don't want it to happen. Because just negative ionizers, and ionization in your field where you live, on some drug, you know, SRI uptake patients, they can throw the drugs out just with the ionization. In ionization, we look at the body reproducing the cells at 90 million per second. The air ion content a few years ago on this earth, like 100 years ago, was approximately 1,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter to a couple thousand positive ions. It's always been noted that negative ions heal and positive ions kill. If you put a room in 100% person in a room with 100% positive ions, they'll die within 24 hours. If you put a, a room full of negative ions, they'll live as long as their normal lifespan would be and then somewhat beyond that. Ionization became a big bargaining chip in the holistic health. It's helped a lot of people. But today it's not enough. Today we have to go a step further back into how science works. We look at the science of the electrical precursation. Science of electrical precursation allows us to look at the intelligence behind the DNA exchange and therefore to make the proper adjustments in the human psyche so that we can control everything all the way down to the biochemistry, including mood and attitude. Because of these kinds of things going on, I saw this coming a long, long time ago. I went with a lot of my friends and we developed a lot of alternative technologies which are in use today. And that's one of the things that we do quite post hastily. I've had a great time doing all these things and making this aware, people aware of what we do. Now people have to become more aware. Otherwise, we're going to have worse diseases. Uh, with these satellites that are in place now, it's very sad because the energy that emits from them affects all human bodies. It goes directly into the basic ELF frequencies of the body, which are from direct current to about 30 cycles per second, 30 hertz. And these frequencies regulate our heartbeat, our circulatory rate, including blood pressure, our DNA exchange, our immune system behavioral characteristics, our, our way of thinking, our energy levels, our digestive levels, our consciousness itself. All of these things are affected by outward frequencies coming into the body in that small little range of frequencies. Most people don't realize it. That's what happens. Secondly, the huge amount of power poles and above the ground electrical wires in all shapes and form all around this world is basically producing a grid of death. And thirdly, and people will start to notice this fairly soon, is the cell phone technology is out of hand. The power requirements has gone up more. And I even posted that we even posted on the TNT board on BBS radio a Russian experiment where a Russian scientist took a normal egg, put two cell phones on either side of it, 
put the two cell phones in talk mode for 45 minutes, and he had a hard-boiled egg. And that just about describes the people today that use cell phones repeatedly. You need to get yourself a headset if you're going to use a cell phone or go into some alternative device like a nuclear receptor or some device like that that allows the body to process the radiation. You're never going to get rid of it. You're going to have to process it. Processing is very, very important. Now, going back to the hologram, first we have what's called the scalar wave. Scalar wave is an event that's been heretofore for quite a while unimpeded, unimpeded by its, its action and its purpose. For example, if you were going to start a company, you would get an idea from somewhere, from your higher self, from an alien, or from your friend, or whatever. You would plan that company and the output of that company. You would plan manufacturing, you would plan distribution, you would plan sales and support. Then you would take your product, go out and sell it, deliver it, and repair it. That would be an entire thought form which would break down into a form of scalar wave. Now, I know that scalar waves are often considered a device of a weapon. When you start a scalar wave, a huge activity of scalar waves, and stop it very suddenly, that creates a backlash flash or an antimatter event. And science has been able to look at this antimatter event as a form of weaponry. So therefore, you have what we call cold nuclear energy built off of scalar waves. If you were to start a church, like any, any church, any denomination, for any period of time, that would cause a scalar wave event to create itself, and eventually you would have what we call a wave packet for that. If you start a family, you find someone and you marry that person, and you have a family, you have children, that produces an event horizon of scalar waves. The entire life of the family going into the grandparents, the grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, etc. So if you look, if you stand back from all of this, from creation itself, and look at this entire event, event series of events that go on, you see wave packets or scalar waves everywhere doing all kinds of things. But they're all unique in the fact that scalar waves are only connected in consciousness and not in time. Consciousness bridges the time and makes it appear to work together. For example, when I was working on time travel, I was able to go into the future a slight, uh, a slight amount. I wrote about it in my Rays of Truth, Crystals of Light book about the T100 time tra tra travel transposer. In that, I didn't go forward in time <coughs> days or months or years because there is no future. There is no forward in time. All you'll do, all that happens, is when you accelerate the electrons and protons and charges on your body to a higher level of energy and then collapse that field, that gives you a momentary rush out of the dimension of the electrical spin and the ionization that takes place in the human cell structure as a whole group. And so, therefore, you break away from the cellular group structure of the human race, and you go out beyond where they are. Only a few hundreds or millions of a second. My observation was that first white light changed to ultraviolet light, and as it changed into ultraviolet light, all material world, everything that you would know as the material concrete universe, disappeared, and it went into a black void. Therefore, only stratifying science about what lies below ultraviolet and what goes beyond infrared. Infrared, of course, is more towards heat. Ultraviolet is more towards consciousness. Uh, flies and, and angry insects see infrared. Butterflies and docile insects see ultraviolet, including birds. So you begin to see how that works. As far as going a day or two ahead, in time, what will be necessary is to be able to go beyond the speed of light and up to the speed of thought. Well, there is no speed of thought, it's instantaneous. 
So once again, you end up in the same situation. But if you're able to theoretically travel in the world of probability, then you can see probable outcomes from all human events as they occur here and now. In other words, you can imagine a room with 10 batteries in it. Each battery, or let's say seven batteries, and each battery has a different colored light bulb. And you have a person manning each battery. And so what you do for, to represent the present, you have everybody turn their lights, their battery on and light their bulbs simultaneously. And then what you have is a white light. Then to demonstrate the future, you would have everybody start pulsing their light. And standing from a distance, the pulsation of all these different lights would eventually produce a hue, a color, a general color, based on the harmonic of all the different pulsations that are going on. And that would represent, that color would represent the future. That would be one way of looking at what goes on in the future. So that's a little bit about time. The time doesn't quite work like people expect it to. It works in a different manner. We did a lot of work with time in our systems. We have a thing that we developed called a System 3. What we did with System 3 was allow people to experience their own inner time. That's a good way to start. We found that was a good way for people to begin to get a grasp on what time is all about. The irradiator, the device that we developed called the irradiator, is a large column that stands about seven feet tall, maybe yeah, about seven feet tall, and it's placed in a circle divided into seven. The reason it's divided into seven is that defines pi. Pi is the definition of the pyramid itself. It's also the angle of the Great Pyramid in Egypt, and it also defines consciousness in form or in matter. A lot of people don't realize that when you take different shapes, for example, a pyramid or a geodesic shape or an octahedron or a, uh, any, any type of shape that you would make, you're going to have to take matter. And when you build this shape, that matter is going to interfere with space. It's going to occupy space. Anytime you occupy space, you're going to differentiate time. When you have an alternative field of differentiated time and space, you create motion and energy. Energy is not created or destroyed. But this is a created form of energy coming from a data bank of energy from somewhere else. And it's being expressed around the general location of that geometric form that you've just made up. Our modern science doesn't quite understand that yet. That Area 51, they probably do, but more modern science in a laboratory doesn't understand that. Modern science wants to measure how much silver is moved from one point to another in a solution, in a brine solution. And from that, they came up with a measurement of a unit of energy called the Coulomb. From that, the Coulomb, we have the ampere. We have the milliamp, the microamp, et cetera. The amount of distance that Coulomb would travel created a differentiation in the field of where the silver would move, and that was called voltage. So we were able to come up with scientific measurements of voltage and ampere, voltage and current. From that, science looked at all credible forms of measurement for years as being a hypothesis of the electromagnetic energies, changes in frequencies, vibratory rates of the dis distribution of electricity and the current, the resultant current behind it. If it didn't conform to that, theoretically in science, it didn't have any meaning. Science didn't understand, for example, when you take a pyramid and rub your hands together across the top of it and place them down over the top of the apex of the pyramid, you can actually feel a chi force if you're sensitive, if you're not blocked up in your organs, like your liver and your kidneys are not blocked. You'll feel an energy. Science couldn't explain why you would take uh, milk and put it inside of a pyramid and it would turn into cheese. It wouldn't rot. Why did, why, why did the um, activity of what goes on inside of a pyramid, why couldn't science understand that, at least in this country? Now, if you look at razor blades, for example, razor blades are sharpened, supposedly, in a pyramid. 
and in 1939, the Carl Durbel in Czechoslovakia patent was issued for a pyramid-shaped razor blade sharpener, and it was an actual patent issue. So some people uh, started recognizing these psi abilities, but what really happened in the case of that patent and the sharpening of the razor blade is that when you use a razor blade, the water dries on the razor blade and the corrosiveness of the razor blade, the water causes a corrosive action, a brittling of the blade, and the next time you use it, it cracks off and, and, and uh, breaks, appearing to become dull. And in fact, it does become dull, but the, razor, the pyramid is balancing the pH, potential hydrogen, of the liquids that are stored in the microsurfaces of the razor blade, and therefore it appears to preserve the blade. So you have to also look at not just the thrill of the scientific patent on an occult object, but you need to know the operational uh, expertise that goes behind it. In extraterrestrial science, the pyramid is used as one of the great stable shapes of the human body of science itself. For example, the red blood cell, hemoglobin, if you were to actually look at it, it's actually four octahedron, four sets of pyramids with a pyramid on the top and a pyramid on the bottom made out of iron that circulates through the body. If you distort that shape with toxins and poisons and all kinds of things that are available in our atmosphere, what happens is the oxygen going into the cells is greatly reduced. So this creates an oxidation, a very bad effect, and the carbon dioxide that's produced by the action of the ATP molecules exercising the molecules in the cell to produce heat and energy and magnetism and electricity and chi force, that carbon monoxide cannot be removed. So what happens is the blood starts to fail, and it's just because of the geometric shape. We found a long time ago that using pyramid-shaped devices, we could re-enhance the geometric integrity of the pyramid-shaped molecules in the body and atoms to fix a lot of things. This was the beginning of uh, our science here at Paradigm. It goes way beyond that, of course. A lot of you have been uh, sending me emails. Uh, be sure and uh, send them to me at uh, fredbell at paradigm.com. Also, the book, Rays of Truth, Crystals of Light, it's a good reference, source of reference. Now, what we're doing now, the next step, is everybody's been waiting for the next book that I've been working on, the inside track. So, and I didn't write, I've been writing it in pieces, but I haven't assembled it yet because I wanted to wait. When I write a book, I have to wait a while to see what's going on. And I knew that cryptically that as we approached the end of this millennium, which would be about 2013, the end of the Mayan calendar, which, of course, in synchronicity, ties right into the Pleiadian uh, repetition around the Pleiades. But I knew that if we got closer, the compression of the energy field would bring out some more exciting topics in the book, Inside Track. I don't like to write a book and get two-thirds of the way through and have to start writing it over again because something drastically changed. But now I think people are waking up and they're getting a handle on what's going on outside. And I think they'll be very open to what I'm going to write on the, in this new book. Also, the new book um, is going to be written a lot in, um, in layman's terms. It's going to cover a lot of the holographic topics. I'm going to go back into that in a few minutes. It's going to go into it in such a way that you don't really need a lot of diagrams. So we're going to use the Rays of Truth book as a reference, and we're going to post up on our website drawings and animation. We're also uh, forming a new website, which is going to be a membership website. It's being assembled up in Los Angeles, as we speak, and we're going to have uh, weekly updates on that, on things that I won't have time to cover on the radio show. The radio shows, I usually have guests now or the archives on Monday afternoon. It used to be Tuesday night. So we're, there are some changes, and I moved my Tuesday night show because it wasn't live to Monday afternoon between, I think, 1 and 2 or 2 and 3. You have to look on the board. For the James Gilchow show. And when I moved that. Hello? 
Hello? Yeah, I'm calling in um, about the James Gilliard show. I'm calling about what? The James Gilliard. James Gillian show, that comes after mine. That show is after mine. That comes up. Yeah, I uh, removed the caller. Yeah. So anyway, a little caller there didn't. Oh. So anyway, um, so we're going to be making. We made these changes so that we could bring on new at uh, DBS Radio. We could bring on new um, live talent because I don't. I feel doing my archives, which is a huge show by the way, on Tuesday night wasn't fair for somebody that was going to do a live show, so I had Don and Doug move it over to the Monday afternoon slot, which works out fine for me. I hope everybody out there uh, can listen to it, and if not, it'll, the archives, I guess, are getting more up to date, and they're going to be posted a lot faster. So we are making a lot of changes over there at BBS Radio. Now, pretty soon, I, I think we'll be doing the Art Bell show, so watch the Art Bell bulletin board. Probably we'll do it early September, is what I've been told and that's a three-hour show. That'll be interesting because the if I do it with Ian Punnett, who I usually do it with, or George Norrie, we're going to have some interesting topics that I won't bring up just yet. And there's a lot of interest in politics versus the hologram. And in finishing up on the hologram, when you look at all these wave packets that I was talking about earlier of all these events that humans have created out of their imagination, all imagination anyway. When you look at all of that and the summation of all of that, you end up with a hologram. The hologram is what is. It's not what could be or what should be, it's what is. We now have a technology and a science that allows you to go directly into the hologram. And this is what we call a science of wave mechanics, and I'll be talking about it in the new book. But wave mechanics, if you were to look at how humans Let's going back. Let's just go back for a few minutes here, and look at this appearance of time speeding up. It appears to go faster now. Okay, from any one individual's point of view, they're going to have a different take on how fast or slow time is going. For some people, it's still not going as fast as it is to others, and to others, it's just. So going so fast, you get up in the morning, and all of a sudden it's lunchtime, and now it's time to go to bed. It goes that fast. This has to do with perception of events. If you were to look at all the Akashic Records, the Akashic Records, of course, is in the Crystal Kingdom, and the Akashic Records, uh, being in the Crystal Kingdom, especially in the Quartz Kingdom, causes, causes these elements to grow. Quartz grows at the rate of a tenth of 1% every 10 years. Because human events, there's more people in the world, more energy follows thought going through their actions, more scalar waves, and more dense holograms. So if you look at that, a person's perception of the hologram and their time pass and their time energy expenditure in that, their perception is always different. Very rarely is the person's perception the same as another person. It might not differ much, but it's, it's different. They're in the separate reality. This, we, from Andromedan science, which is another form of science that will become eventually terrestrial science, from looking at this viewpoint, we look at wave mechanics, wave actions. And when we start taking people into understanding and working within the holograms itself and taking control, now you can take control because there is no point or any point B or point A. You don't, don't go into a hologram and enter into a scalar wave event wait for a certain time to go by, and then make a change in that event. You go in at the point of the event where the change is already made, and that's where you insert the energy. So this is wave mechanics. And so it takes a discipline to understand where to put a thought. It's like almost wishing for something to happen, but changing the wish for it to happen to knowing it already happened and making the wish for something as a result of the happening of that wish. That would be the easiest way to describe it. It's a little bit different than what we're used to. It's not linear. It's assuming the event has already carried itself out and you're on the backside of the event and it's a wave. And it's not a wave like electricity where current goes positive in one direction down a wire and then a negative sign comes along and it goes negative and positive and creates a wave front 
whether it be a microwave or a 60 cycle, very low frequency wave. It's not that kind of a wave. It's a wave like looking at the ocean. It's a motion. And you could take a boat out on the ocean on a calm day and that boat can go really fast from point A to B. And you take that boat on the ocean another day when there's great big waves and you gotta go up the top of a wave at 30 feet high and down the wave at 30 feet down. The boat could be going the same speed and it covers very little distance. Look at it that way and you begin to understand the wave content of a hologram. So all these, these are the kinds of things that we're getting into now. I'm sure a lot of you can totally relate to what I'm saying, and some of you out there probably think I should be locked up, and that's fine. I don't mind either, either thought. It works, they both work for me. And this is the way life goes now. It's just not the same as it was. I'm, I'm a sentimentalist, and I wish that it was like it was before, but I'm not going to put that into the hologram because that wouldn't, it gets old after a while. The change, you know, in order to experience the good, we experience the low side of it, the uncomfortable side. It keeps us, as I say, it keeps our chops up. It keeps us right on top. And helping others understand, those of you that get something out of these conversations or things that you hear from other people, you're going to see, for every bit of knowledge that you acquire, you're going to see a place to get rid of it, to share it with someone. Because there's so many people out there now that are really looking for some help. And I know a lot of my listeners out there are quite along the path of being teachers now. And of course, we're always students. So it's very important to spread the knowledge that you hear, not only from my show, but other shows. There's some amazing people on BBS Radio. And I think that we've got some of the top radio shows on the planet on this network right now. And I think this network is going to be exploding all over the place. It's already started. So I'm having a great time. And uh, my website is Fred Bell, or actually it's Paradigm, www.paradigm, that's spelled E-Y-R-A-D-Y-N-E dot com. Or you can type in Dr. Fred Bell on the search engine, and that'll take you to Paradigm. We've got a lot of interesting things over there. We had to delay our seminar in Canada because of all these ridiculous limitations there are on travel right now. It just isn't worth dealing with these idiots. Uh, getting rid of liquids and soaps and things like that out of your shaving bag so you can get on an airplane is completely ridiculous to have detectors that are there that detect everything. They can use these things. They can run them a little bit harder and turn the sensitivity up. I'm getting intelligence reports uh, and I've been posting them on BBS radio when they come in. If you look at the bulletin board on BBS radio, uh, sometimes I don't have anything there, and then when something comes in, I post it up. And the reason it's posted there is because CNN and MSNBC and these other stations typically are listened to by the Arabs as a source of news, and anybody that's ever traveled outside the United States knows that that's not the news. The news is here. So with that, we will close the Dr. Fred Bell's Health, Science, and Energy show. And listen in Tuesday night or Monday night for our archive or Monday afternoon for our archive show. And uh, I'll have a guest on next weekend. Until then, have a great evening.